took a lot to get to that point. My God. Anyways, um, I got some time and stats and stuff I'm going to put up before, after. Um, there was a lot of stuff messed up with this. I'm not even going to be kidding you. If you like to tinker with stuff, great. You're going to need tools. You're going to need time. And you're going to need a lot of patience. Because that really was a train wreck. Like... If I had to give it like a skill rating of like 1 to 10, like 2 being a regular kit with just basic stuff, this would be like a hard 8 or 9 because you're going to need some tools, you're going to need a lot of aggravation, management of anger. <laughs> because there is a lot of stuff that they just threw together, sent out the door. And you got to deal with it to make it run right. Porting this and grinding the crap out of it is not going to make this run right. So, I'm just going to tell you that straight up. You're going to be breaking this bottom half down. You're going to be splitting cranks. You're going to be decking things. You're going to be making a spacer. There's, there's a lot to it. I had a lot of uh, messed up parts they sent. There's sand actually in the freaking head of this thing, like in the aluminum. The faces on the exhaust were like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the head did not even perfectly sit flat on it. Like if you bolted three corners down, one side was actually up. So this would have never ran right out of the box even. Um, my intake was, like, basically closed. I think the transfers were 80% closed. Oh, the exhaust duration, it was using, like, 40% of the exhaust port. It was just funny. Like, all in all, they didn't put grease. Well, they did in a couple things and not in others. Um, as I was pulling it apart, I came across a lot of weird stuff, like they green Loctited the studs in, and nobody does that. And I unscrewed them, and it's because it was casting imperfections, uh, the casting's uneven. <laughs> you could go on and on. This really was a dumpster fire, like right out of the box, so I'm not going to lie with you. My Magneto came dead. DOA, right on the spot, open coil. Um, they actually had the magnet on backwards. <laughs> I thought I'd point that out because I thought that was hilarious. Like like it was literally turned um, to the 11 o'clock position instead of one at top up. So just kind of funny there. Uh, the spark plug hole that was in this head had no spark plug in it, but they sent me a spark plug with it, which was kind of interesting because it wasn't supposed to come with one. But when you go to screw it in, the threads weren't there. <laughs> so I didn't even add that, but yeah, my spark plug hole was not threaded. <laughs> so the fins were all bent. I did straighten them. Uh I don't know, you could go on and on. It's missing some hardware, had some hardware. They used lock washers as spacers because the bolts were too long under the clutch. You know, dumpster fire. But anyways, here we go. Here's the numbers of when it came to me. And here's the numbers of after. I did a timing video. I put this damn thing all together. I found out one of the studs had that casting imperfection, which you'll see. And honestly, I'm just not taking it all apart after that. I got it in. It's holding. I want to get it running first. Afterwards, maybe we'll take the saw and just cut the whole thing right in half. Then we could do a timing video, a cutaway one. But I got the numbers. I'm going to post those up so you can see them. I'll show you the video when I did the timing. I put the damn time lapse on when I was cutting the other piece and I forgot to turn it off. So here we go.
Well, I know why the green Loctite did that. Those couple studs now. <laughs> well, this one stripped out. And I'm like, oh man, I got everything together. I had to pull it all apart. So, I get there. I look down in the hole. There's a section about yay big. That wide. An air bubble. It was like the size of two peas stacked on top of each other. Inside the casting. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So, actually what I did is I took a piece of brass... And I did a thread on it. Um, I did a 7 16 thread. A fine thread. 24. And then uh, tap this out. And then I chop the threads. Kind of so it looks like a tap, I guess. <clears throat> and then uh, I put JV Weld down in the hole. And then skirt it in to set it in place. And then uh, drilled it out, tapped it for six mil. And I just took an old stud I had, put it in. I cut it down on the lathe for six mil. And that's what's going down in there now. Just like that. So that's what we're going to do. But, uh, yeah, that kind of pissed me off. It, it was a bad cast. Now, I, I actually had a lot of stuff like that. Let me see if I can find the head. Give me a moment. All right, there we go. You see those little random pock marks? Those are actually some air bubble. And some of them had, like, a... I'm not sure what they sand casted, but they used sand with this. And those bigger ones... That are on there. Those were actually particles of sand. So when I started cutting this head. Um, I, I was just using a uh, high speed steel bit. Because I mean works perfectly fine for cutting this. And uh, it just started chewing all the damn teeth off on it. And I'm like what the. <laughs> I thought maybe I had it the wrong feed or speed. And I'm like okay that ain't it. So what I ended up doing is using a C7 uh, carbide bit, which is basically like something you could drill through marble with, but it's a sharpened bit. I had a dovetail cutter, I think. I think it was a dovetail cutter. It's really hard. You don't really want to go fast with it or the carbide just shatters on them. But they're so hard they'll go right through rock. And that's actually what was going on here. I was cutting rock, aluminum, and steel. Definitely not a fun time. So, Alright, so I got this thing done. And you'll see what the uh, stock timing and stuff of this was. But yeah, if you followed along and watched, this thing really was a dive. I mean, there was a lot of screwed up stuff in this. So, I'm not even going to begin <laughs> to try and, like, good lord. But, uh, yeah, there there was a ton of stuff messed up with this. There, the timing was all off. It's mostly because the geometry of the bottom end was wrong. But, anyways, in a day or so here, we'll have a video of this running. I did not change any of the port heights or anything in this. Everything is factory port heights, exhaust, intake, the transfers. I didn't mess with any of it. I did um, straight cut them through, though, because, like always, the iron sleeve section smaller than the transfers. And I clear cut them straight through matched only to the aluminum. So if the aluminum had a shape, I clear cut it straight through, and that was it strictly. So, we're going to try this uh, new carb out on it. See how this little thing works. And we're going to go from there and give it a go. Uh, I got a guy that is coming for that ethanol engine I did. Uh, he wants to buy it. He's going to come take it for a ride and... 
the price is right. <laughs> it's out the door. So that might be going on that bike for now anyways. Um, I got a rebuild coming too of another engine. We'll be going through that. It's a blown crank. I know a lot of people are like terrified of that. So we're going to completely rebuild that. But uh, there she is. And next day or so we'll have a ride video of it and see how it works. Thank <laughs> you.